Please, Tanana. Tanana, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Today we're going to start with a whole different concept, which is organic chemistry. So these are the learning competencies. First, we're going to describe the special nature of carbon. And second, we're going to list general characteristics of organic compounds. First, what do we mean by organic? In everyday usage, the word organic can be found in several different contexts. Chemicals extracted from plants and animals were originally called organic because they came from living organisms, as well as organic fertilizers. They are obtained from living organisms. An organic food is grown without the use of pesticides or synthetic fertilizers. In chemistry, the word organic and organic chemistry are defined a little more precisely. So what is organic chemistry? Organic chemistry is concerned with the study of the structure and properties of compounds containing carbon. Out of 92 naturally occurring elements and many artificial ones in the periodic table, organic chemists look at the periodic table differently, like this. So remember, all organic compounds contain carbon atoms. However, some carbon compounds are not considered organic, mostly for historical reasons, such as carbon monoxide, CO, carbon dioxide, CO2, diamond, graphite, and salts of carbon-containing polyatomic ions. Compounds that do not contain carbon are called inorganic compounds, and most inorganic compounds are ionic compounds. Therefore, inorganic chemistry is the study of the other elements and non-carbon-containing compounds. So what's the difference between organic versus inorganic compounds? So this table shows the difference between the two. The bonding in organic compounds are covalent. In organic compounds, they are often ionic. The forces between molecules in organic are generally weak. In inorganic, it's quite strong. Generally, ionic bonds are stronger than covalent bonds. So what's so great about carbon? Why do we have a course for carbon-containing compounds? First, carbon atoms can be linked by strong, stable, covalent bonds. Okay? So generally, ionic bonds are much stronger than covalent bonds because there is stronger attraction between ions that have opposite charges. Okay? Which is why it takes a lot of energy to separate them. However, the network of covalent bonds are stronger in some compounds such as diamond and graphite. So if you're going to look at the structure of diamond and graphite at a molecular level, they are composed of only carbon atoms, pure carbon. Again, we are only talking about the composition, not diamond and graphite themselves. They are not organic. They are rather considered as minerals. So why can't carbon form ionic bond? This is where we use our previous knowledge like the octet rule. Carbon does not form ionic bonds because it has four valence electrons, meaning half an octet. To form ionic bonds, carbon molecules must either gain or lose four electrons. This is highly unfavorable because it would require so much energy to either lose the four electrons or gain four electrons. Therefore, carbon molecules will share their four valence electrons through single, double, or triple bonds so that each atom can achieve noble gas configuration. Carbon atoms can form stable bonds to many other elements such as hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, etc. Carbon atoms can also form complex structures such as long chains, branch chains, rings, chiral compounds, complex 3D shapes, etc. Because of this variety in bonding and complexity, carbon atoms can form a tremendous variety of compounds. There are more than 16 million organic compounds known right now, as opposed to about 600,000 inorganic compounds. Complex organic compounds can also perform a number of useful biological functions. Almost all living organisms involve organic chemistry. We need vitamins, we have lipids, enzymes, ATP, DNA, okay? So they are all organic compounds. 
which are studied more in biochemistry. Complex organic compounds are also present in food we eat, such as carbohydrates, proteins, fats, etc. Most medicines, whether they come from a chemical plant or a green plant, are organic compounds. Most fuels are organic compounds, such as wood, coal, natural gas, gasoline, kerosene, diesel fuel, oil, and other petroleum-based products. Complex organic compounds are also useful in technology, such as paints, plastics, rubber, textiles. This image shows a carbon nanotube. This is used in cleaning polluted water, boosting solar energy storage, molecular syringes, and drug delivery. So CNTs are actually bonded with sp2 bonds, which are extremely strong form of molecular interactions. Mm -hmm. Clear your throat. Lubricate. Mm -hmm. Read that bit. Now, understanding organic chemistry is learning about bonding and the location of electrons. Consider a molecule called acetone. You may know this as nail polish remover. To see how acetone bonds, we usually draw it. So first, we have the shorthand drawing. This is also called a skeletal formula or line angle formula. This formula omits the symbol for C and H, carbon and hydrogen. Each line represents a bond. Next, we have the Kekulé formula. This is a structural formula which displays the atoms of the molecule in the order they are bonded. It also depicts how the atoms are bonded to one another. Next, we have the wedge dash or wedge hash. So these are diagrams that are most common representations used to show a 3D shape. Okay? They are usually drawn with two bonds in the plane of the page, one in front of the plane and one behind the plane. Okay? So when it's bold, it's in front. When it's broken lines, it's behind. Last, we have the electron density plot. It's a figure or graph that shows the probability where the electron of an atom can be found. This is not commonly used. Each carbon atom can form four bonds, either to one carbon or to different atoms. When these two carbon atoms combine, we will have this. And if you notice, carbon has three more sites to make bonds. So it will bond with another carbon, which will give us three carbon chain, then another, which will give us four carbon chain, and bond, which will give us this branch chain, and etc. So the bonding never stops in carbon chains, unless all the electrons are paired with hydrogen or other atoms. Bonds can be multiple bonds, double or triple. So we have the single bond. This results from the sharing of two electrons. We have the double bond, which results from the sharing of four electrons. And the triple bond, which results from the sharing of six electrons. Okay, so if you're going to count, all of these carbons will still follow the octet rule eventually. Let's try and triple bond. So you have two here, two, four, six, eight. So eight electrons here. Again, it's by sharing. Same with this. So when this carbon atom pair, we will have two, four, six, and eight. Another concept that you need to know is isomerism. Isomerism is the phenomenon in which more than one compounds have the same chemical formula but different chemical structures. Again, compounds having identical molecular formulas but different arrangements of atoms are called isomers. One type of isomerism is called structural isomerism. Structural isomers are molecules with the same molecular formula but their atoms have different arrangements or bonds. Take for example, ethyl alcohol and dimethyl ether. They are both C2H6O, but the arrangement is different. In ethyl alcohol, it's CCOH, okay? In dimethyl ether, it's COH. 
C. Alcohol and ether are two of the functional groups that we are going to study in the next videos. The next video will be about sp3, sp2, and sp hybridization and hydrocarbons. Bye-bye.